Hi guys and welcome to Red Dog Gaming where today is finally here we're going to be playing Rome Total War Remastered or should I say Total War Rome Remastered as they've now called it. Now we are going to be playing Parthia as you can see and I've noticed something quite interesting here. You can see that the Seleucids, look at that faction difficulty medium, are they joking? Especially on very hard, very hard. Like. That's kind of weird, and uh, Parthia very hard. Now, I have played as Parthia on very hard, very hard, only once before on the original, and it was hard, as you can see. The main problem was money. Luckily, though, Parthia has probably the most cost-effective unit in the whole game, I would say, which is just the generic horse archer unit. So, let's have a look. We're going to be playing, obviously, as I said, on very hard, very hard. No realistic governance, just follow characters down here. In terms of unit scale, we're playing on large and we are with the realism uh, unit thing. So no pink pajama people, I don't think. They'll be a bit more realistic because it just looks so much better in my opinion. So much better. The Parthians were nomads until in the 4th century BC they settled near the Caspian Sea as part of the Dahae Com of Confederation. Since that time, the Seleucids have often claimed to be the overlords of Parthia. Wrong. And have sometimes tried to enforce that claim terrible. This is not something that endears the Seleucid Empire to the Parthian kings, I can imagine. The Parthians have the potential to be a great power, perhaps even a great empire, that's the idea, as they sit close to the main trade routes from the east to the Mediterranean. The wealth of the world flows near their lands, a fortune that could pay for any army that even the most ambitious king could imagine. All it requires is to reach out and take it. So it's saying that you know the lands nearby are rich, so especially Egypt, some of the Seleucid lands are okay. The Armenian lands are good. This step here is terrible. Uh, to the north are the Barbarian steppes, peopled by fierce tribes who need to be watched. To the west by the Seleucid Empire and the lands of Alexander's successors. And beyond them, the rising power of Rome and the traitors of Carthage. Perhaps common cause could be made with them for a while. So yeah, so that is what we're going to do. We're going to attack on all three fronts to start with. Because you have to, otherwise you will die on very hard, very hard. So let's listen to the intro, it's pretty good. The desert is ours. It is my home. Invaders come here, but they do not leave. They do not understand the desert. They do not understand how it gives life. Or how it kills. So they die. And we grow stronger. The dead, now, the dead, cannot pass on their newfound wisdom. So invaders keep coming, keep trying to take our lands and our wealth. But then, wealth flows through this land. And if our people have one failing, it is the love of wealth. It is sweeter than water. It is more powerful than the sword. For any sword can be turned aside with a gold coin. Gold will buy a thousand warriors. And a thousand warriors, why, they are the start of an empire. That intro is pretty cool. I do like it. Defenders of the Desert, eh? Um... Let's have a look at our territory. So we start up here in the very top corner of the map, Campus Sakai, which is not the greatest uh, town in the world. It's so far away from a capital, no matter where your capital is, even though the capital is just down here, we will have public order issues here. Um, now, in the early game, we're going to have to turn our taxes right up. Um, so the next town we down we have is our capital, which is our Sakia. Which is a large town, so that's fine. Um, not the richest town in the world, but it's it's fine. Uh, and then Susa down here next to the Seleucids. This has ability to go on very high tax rate. Um, this is a minor city, so that's actually great. Um, they don't have cavalry stables, and that is 100% something we need there first. Now, Osakia, most likely we're going to go for roads here to start with. We need our economy to to start up and going but second to that like it won't improve the economy right now it will allow slavery to increase the population growth here straight away from when we take Frasper so we will do that 
Now, Campus Sakai. Again, we will go for roads up here. So we won't use a lot of money in this first turn. Um, but we'll also recruit those horse archers. This guy is pointless. So the thing, the plan is we are going to attack the Scythians. There's a settlement down here somewhere. And then we'll probably go that one and then Tanaeus. Tanaeus is good, um, good settlement. And from Osakia, we'll attack the Armenians. And then from Susa, we'll attack the Seleucids. So we should all be moving west pretty quickly, hopefully. The thing with the Parthia is they have the most cost-effective unit in the game, which is these guys, in my opinion, anyway. Missile attack 7, ammo, lots of ammo, missile range 120. Like They don't have great morale or melee attack, uh, but they are so powerful, especially uh, getting into the late game. Now let's get a peasant because uh, we want to take all of these guys out of here. Uh, if we left one in, would they be happy or not? So we're going to have to try and do literally every single battle we can. Um, outside cities because it's an absolute nightmare trying to get uh, people through cities get all these horse arch because they don't have a tight formation either they have quite a uh, wide formation we're going to go stand there we're also going to go Look, we know they have a bit of a terrible army in here like militia hoplites and militia cavalry but generally they tend to leave the city and that will be when we strike um over this way, of course, we're going to take as many people as we can. Once again, how are we looking? 70%, that's fine. They won't uh, revolt. Let's go after Frasper. This diplomat, uh, we're going to go send over to Armenia. Let's see whether we can get anything out of them. Uh, we were going to get rid of that. Disband you. You're costing us 100. It's not a huge deal, but it's not. We don't need you. Because we're going to charge at the Scythians. So, yep, disband them. Now, over here, we are recruiting another horse archer. Could do with one more, and then we'll go. Um, do we want to recruit a horse archer here? I think so. That would definitely be a good idea. Uh, I'm recruiting a peasant here to bring these slingers. Uh, in terms of our family tree... Let's have a look. Here we are. Uh, let's go on the big one. So, our Saces. So, I have played this on original Rome Total War just once. Uh, on Very Hard, Very Hard. And it was pretty difficult. It's quite a difficult campaign to start with because of money mainly. Not really. Like, the battles are get kind of samey, but they, they're fine because you have really good, really cost effective units. Um, in the horse archers but money becomes an issue quite quickly so uh, we have to expand quickly we have to get Seleucia we have to get Frasper and then we need to get to Catias as quick as we can and connect all our land for trade and that is the plan really and that's how we're going to survive the money situation and then we start expanding by the time we get down towards Antioch you know, we should have taken quite a few territories. We should be in a position where we can start fielding a couple of full stacks. And at that point, you know, we'll be unstoppable. If, especially if we have uh, experienced horse archers. Because they are so good. Right. First turn over, I think so. Let's end it and see what happens. It's very smooth now. See, they took those troops away. Which is brilliant for us. Let's go follow him. It's mainly it's it's their main army <laughs> from that settlement. So they literally just left their faction air in there, undefended. We've declared war. Brilliant. Uh, we got roads in Arsakia and Campus Sakai. Most important thing is, I was going to say building here, but I think we're just going to go for the palisade there, just in case rebels decide. Sometimes rebels do decide to attack in original Rome. It's kind of weird. Up here, what do we want to go? Probably the land clearance. That's always good. Let's keep on recruiting up here so we can keep on uh, sending reinforcements. Or actually, let's take the peasant so we can um, break down the gates. We need some infantry for that. So if we just left the peasant behind, would you guys be happy? That's what I want to know. 
No, but I'm guessing you would be if we turn the tax down. Yeah, you would if you were on low taxes. So, let's take you. Leave it undefended. And we will go. We'll set up a watchtower. Ah, we don't have enough money for watchtowers. Let's not mess around with that. Let's just get down there. We might set up one on our border. That's about, you know, I can, I can justify spending that cost. We start off with cataphracts as well, which are pretty awesome. Um, let's see, look at this. Horse archers have a, a cost of 110 per turn. How much do... Like, there's 10 more than the peasants. They are so cost-effective. It's ridiculous. Um, we managed to recruit eat these guys. Um, yeah, cool. So, they could reach, come back and reach us, but we should shred them if they decide to attack us. You better get moving. Cool. Building there. Building up there and recruiting. Good. Uh, do we have enough to recruit one more unit of horse archers? Yes, we do. So let's do that. And uh, let's go attack uh, Fresper. First battle of the uh, series, if I can uh, get the camera straight again. Let's just see what they have first. So they have archers and then they have a couple of Eastern infantry. Uh, we'll charge the archers with uh, Ardum Manish and Arsakis. Arsakis generally, from my experience playing Parthia, dies quickly. Very quickly. Incredibly quickly. So, um, so we'll just charge uh, charge Arsakis in because it doesn't really matter if he's already 60 he will die soon so we might as well charge him in uh, we'll get uh, we'll get a new guy and we'll get an, another guy in about f six or seven turns we'll get the first new guy like next turn or the turn after because one of them was 15 so that's good that's really good we can kind of general spam because our general is strong as well, especially early game. Never easy, but then it's not meant to be easy. It is a testing ground for men, for noble men, and even the lowest of us is ready for this test. Cool. Now the thing with uh, the thing with the uh, with this is the no, we don't want the cataphracts to go in. Is that the uh, the general speeches are so bad for anyone that's not Roman? <laughs> it's almost it's kind of embarrassing, really. Um, who? Are you, where are the archers? I'm guessing like that is the town square. Look at this tiny little town. I don't think I've ever played on this 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 type of map before. I want to get rid of those archers, honestly. Get in there. Uh, you get that. I'd rather the archers fired at the slingers than the horse archers, because horse archers are more sort of uh, valuable per per unit. The thing is, they do still keep their ammunition. They did in the original anyway. I'm not sure about now, but they did still keep their ammunition, you know, full from the original. Um, so they would keep all the dead people's ammo as well. So then they still had the same amount to fire, even though there was less of them. Which kind of funny we should be able to just rain death on these guys honestly you should be able to fire now uh, get off that don't think the archers really know what they're doing I will charge these guys yeah they get oh god they're getting absolutely shredded get there Get into them. Get back there. Uh, you stop firing. Yeah, shred those guys as much as you can. And then charge these charge the general unit in the back. They might try and come and help them. Uh, you are yeah, we want you to survive. If you're in the middle of here, that's kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, you start firing at those guys. 
Uh, yeah, they're on skirmish mode, so it's okay. Let's go, big charge. Let's go. Oh, they've ch they've turned around. They're gonna they're gonna get a charge though to the face. Wow, that was slow. That was the slowest charge. That's the most sluggish charge I've ever seen. Right, sort them out. You guy, come over here. Go, 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 go. Quick, please. Like, you aren't very valuable, but you're at least somewhat valuable. Get the general over here. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe over that way. Yep, yeah, that's good. Just fire at them. And if we can just stand here, that would be really good, actually. Yeah, we, we should get some experience from this. That'd be nice. Oh, we lost a man there. Th yeah, continue because we want to get experience for the horse archers. There's a chance they might get experience and it's so valuable in this. If you think one of these guys, they have seven missile attacks. So if they have nine experience, full experience, um, they will have 16 missile attacks. Basically the same as a Praetorian cohort's peeler at the start. Took a few casualties, but yeah, that was fine. It was an easy battle to start with. That's kind of the nice thing about these 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 games. They always leave you a nice easy settlement to take. Like think about the Julii. They've got Suggesta. Uh, or wait, Suggesta? Yeah, Suggesta, not Suggestica. Suggestica is the one Victory! east of Patavium, right? I think so. I played this game so many times. I <laughs> like uh. I should probably know that. This doesn't have a building yet. Hmm. Could do with building that, honestly. What's our... Yeah, see, the balance next turn is is negative. 17. What were we... We were building... Oh yeah, we were building... Uh, that, that can wait. This is more important. War between us and the Slukids. Yep. Yeah. Fine. Retinue expands. Galloper. Good. That's one one command talent. Excellent. Uh, construction report and recruitment report. Very nice. Uh, Susa. How are you doing for recruitment? That's fine. Did we recruit another guy? Yeah, we're recruiting a peasant there. That's, that's fine. Um, we really need to move on from here, though, as quick as possible. So, hmm, because we need to leave someone behind. I don't want to leave the slinger. Someone should come of age, though. So let's end the turn and see what happens. There's Armenia. Oh, they brought their diplomat now. Let's uh, let's see whether we can. They've got a, they've got a settlement just here. Yeah, their capital. I'll offer them map information and trade rights. I want map information, but give me money. How would you feel about 10,000? Very demanding, right. What about 5,000? I wish you could just toggle this here. That'd be so nice. Generous, right, okay. 7,000. Balanced, let's would you try consider? that. Uh, no, we don't want Thingies per turn. Oh, that's 6,500. Oh, not 65,000. That would be very nice if you were willing to most do that. Proposal. There we are. So now we have money again. <laughs> so now we can uh, build that. Awesome. Oh my god, look at them. I should have built a watchtower. Like, out here somewhere, so they'll go stand on it. It wants this guy. Oh yeah, this guy has come of age then. Coming of age. Archimedes. Um, uh, devout and understanding of logistics. Factionaire, bureaucrat, cavalry commander, natural born leader. This guy should be our commander. I'm going to send our Sarkis back to build a watchtower there. Because it's important. Right, let's get going with these guys. 
Uh, actually, yeah, we can't recruit peasants there. Let's recruit a peasant here so we can get these slingers on the road. Because we need slingers to break through. Uh, yeah, they're still happy. Very nice. Uh, normally I like to stand on this bridge once the roads have been done. Uh, and see what happens because they... Uh, look at this army. They have cataphracts somewhere as well, Armenia, at the start of the game. I know from my pain at playing the Seleucids. <laughs> Alright, keep on going. Uh, I think we will build a watchtower here next turn. Maybe there? Uh, no. You have to go that way. Maybe like up there and then we'll come across. So, yeah, you're going down there. We should... Be able to take this, this turn. We've only got one thingy, but let's do it. Look at that balance of power, this is ridiculous. It's just annoying maneuvering these guys around in the city. We're going to have to do them in units of two, otherwise it just doesn't work. Like, it's just not possible. They just, they just don't know what they're doing. And I thought they had kind of improved this, improved the pathfinding and all that sort of stuff, but seems not. <laughs> not a huge deal anyway. Not a huge deal anyway. I think they have improved it slightly, but, you know, not hugely. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see if it loads. And we'll listen to the one-line general speech that they all have, um, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. The bloody day has come. This will be the last for many, come what may. Our enemies will fall today. Yep, is that it? Cool. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Um, right, get you there. You're not really going to get used unless the general decides to, to come really close. Um, don't put you on skirmish mode because it's an absolute pain inside the city. Uh, general, we're going to have to use the general. So this way it looks like it's probably the best. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll send our horse archers up here, and they're kind of it's going to take the general a little bit of time to get around the other way. There, general. Anyway, oh look, eagle circling. That's cool. Is that in the original? Like, surely it is. I, I, I don't know. Your soldiers and the battling ram are at the gates. The battling ram. <laughs> That's what I heard then. The battling ram has Look at its, its face. Work. It's like Your Grond. But it's it's gates. Lamb Grond. Um, you two... Well, whatever. Just come up here. And you two just come up here as well. You can stay here. Uh, these slingers. I want you guys to stand like here in case if they charge down here, we'll, we'll, we'll fire at them. Have lost the wall. Send your troops and take the rest of the settlement. Yeah, they're not going to like that. They probably will start coming down. Units. Yeah, our guys don't like that either. Come on, fire at them. Very nice. Yeah, they, they have two hit points and they're quite strong, so it's going to be hard to kill them all. Um, right. They look like they keep wanting to, to, to charge us, but not know what to do. <laughs> I mean, there isn't really anything they can do, because as soon as they try and charge us, we, we will just move. Just watch what they're doing. Make sure they don't, you know. Okay, so they are coming around that way now. Probably want to do that. Pathing is a big issue. Yeah, let's go. Once they get back in the square, we should start shredding them again. We used a lot of ammo on these guys and not, not killed many. 
So you can see how strong the generals are, especially uh, very hard, very hard. I think very hard, very hard. They will be. They have seven. Seven more attack and defense per unit. So you've got to be careful. I'm not sure the morale is affected though. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, we can't let that general touch us really because they probably will break. These guys have terrible, terrible morale. That is the one downside to these guys, is their bad morale. Oh, they should be firing absolute rockets at these guys now. Uh, right, everyone come down here. Oh no, they're running away again. No. Don't run yet. Now run. I'm gonna send you. No, apparently not. Send you guys back here. They keep wanting to do it and then deciding not to. <laughs> oh well, we'll just keep shooting them then. <laughs> it's not the. Uh, this is basically the horse archer tactic. You've got to do it. You've got to be efficient, especially on very hard, very hard. It might not be the most exciting. You know, we could do an all-out charge into these guys, but there's no point. When you can win like this and not lose any men, or lose minimal men or whatever. There is no point wasting good men. That is my philosophy anyway, especially with this sort of tactic. We will, you know, use meat shields and stuff at certain points. Like Eastern Infantry, we're never going to recruit Eastern Infantry. We might take them as a, you know, mercenary option if we don't have any uh, infantry to man a ram. But apart from that, we're <laughs> we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be recruiting them. It's just going to be horse archers. It's literally going to be a cavalry cavalry spam game, which it has to be. You're playing as Parthia, right? It's like playing Scythia and not using horse archers. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, well, let's get our general in. He might as well fire his, his ammunition at them. Uh, you guys come back here. Let's go send our general. Those javelins should probably kill the rest of them. Hopefully. They should have had enough hit point damage. Maybe not the general one, that, that's it. Yeah, the there we are. Very nice. You don't need to be on the skirmish mode anymore. There we are. Victory Perfect. No we lost one man, probably from friendly fire. Not, uh, not the most interesting of battles, <laughs> but, you know, you've got to be done, especially on very hard. And the Slukids will have that big stack coming back at some point. Or did they go further away? I can't remember what happened in the end turn then. Hmm. They might have gone further away. We'll have a look. We'll have a look at what they've done. These are cool graphics. I like the new sort of loading screens. They look cool. They could have just kept the old ones and that would have been easy for them. But like the new artwork, I, I do like it. Right, of course, we've got to enslave, get that population. We've also got the Hanging Bag Gardens of Babylon. Gives 20% bonus to farming income in all settlements, which is excellent. Gardens were attributed by the Greeks to uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Yep, that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> who was said to have created them to please his wife or concubine from Medea, who had a passion for mountain surroundings. All of Alexander's soldiers returned from Mesopotamia. They told tales of the wonderful ancient land and its gardens that they had seen, the cunning irrigation systems and many terraces of plants and trees, all in the middle of a desert landscape, were seen as a wonderful luxury and a work of genius. Babylonian records, oddly, do not have any references to the Hanging Gardens. Yeah, that is weird. Never even thought about that, really. Yeah, so we've got full stack still. They got 53 in this one, which is really annoying, honestly, <laughs> to see that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what are we going to build here then? And we've got roads already. This is again a large town. Um, I mean, we could go for the stables again so we can ret start training more guys. Uh, I think we go for Zoroastra just to get the public order high enough for us to just leave one peasant behind. If we just left one peasant, would they be happy? Not Tab, I didn't mean to do that. 
Uh, no. <laughs> Is the answer to that? Yes, they would, actually. Uh, let's keep on going with the horse archers. Okay, no. Let's not keep on going with the horse archers then. We have none. Uh, we aren't able to get them. Oh, so this is where they went. Let's see what they do. Let's start moving towards them. We'll go towards Hatra. Now up here, they have cataphracts. Armenia always starts with cataphracts. So they're either here or here. I, I think they will probably be here. Onward, um, sire. Can we get closer? Yeah, we can't really see. Uh, yeah, it's like, what is that? <laughs> One unit. We... Yep. No. Uh... Yeah, get rid of that. Cool. Looks like everything, so let's end the turn and see what happens. Uh, wonder captured, yeah, cool. Retinue expand, exotic slave, cool. Uh, Greek cities at war with Carthage and Rome. Sucks to be them. Arsakia, let's... Are we going for a peasant? Yeah, that's fine. Frasper, it's building. Yeah, that's a thing. Let's make sure we're all building everywhere. Very good. Awesome. Um, what else are we looking at here? That's it. Cool. Great. Let's end the turn. I didn't even see Seleuc the Seleucids move then. I swear I have it turned on. Let me have a look. Settings. Uh, gameplay. Follow the people. Where is it? The graphics, maybe? Yeah. No? I, I don't know. I thought I had it set to following. Uh, what happens. But could be wrong. If they want to send that army that way, on the other side of the river, that honestly is good for me. Hatra normally has an absolute stack in it though, uh, no matter who you're playing, whether you're playing Egypt or these guys. So we had a bit of a peasant recruitment round last turn. Let's get up here. If we build a watchtower there, might be okay. Um, you get on this bridge. You in there. Yep. And now what are we going to build? Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that in a sec. Uh, we need to send these slingers out and away. I'm hoping that Watchtower will make those rebels stand there. But we'll see. Generally, it takes them a couple of turns a, a lot of the time to decide to do that. We should probably go and look at Hatra rather than this. They can't be too happy that we've taken Seleucia, though. Ah, uh, here we are. We can recruit horse archers. Let's recruit. Let's just put two, just to, just to make sure that I remember. Let's keep on going with the horse archers down here. Pasake. I don't think we should recruit any more horse archers there. Um, right. Let's go with a watchtower over here. Luckily, we got that money from the... Uh... Yep. Attack the neutral faction. They don't have any, even have a wall here yet. Hmm. We've got five archers and a peasants and a, and a general. They've got. They probably have three horse archers and a general. How about we recruit this? Oh, I don't need to recruit it now though. It's 120 a turn. I, I'm willing to take that. They're basically the same as ours. But you've got to remember that the. Uh, but on very hard, the AI cheats a lot. Yeah, we will stand here for the time being. Yeah, they do have cataphracts. How many? Five horse archers versus that. I think we need a couple more, honestly. So let's get two more and then we'll... Unless we get arses, arsakes... Whatever he's called. <laughs> Unless we get him involved and just charge him into the cataphracts. Because he's going to die soon anyway. I think that's probably the play, honestly. Let's do that. Um, Arsakia. 
Let's go for the port. It won't provide a benefit immediately. However, it will provide when we build another port in Kampasake and whatever this town's called. Um, over here, probably the shrine to Zoroaster is going to make us the most money. Because I'm assuming we... Yeah, we've got a lot of corruption here. Because we're far away from our thing. The good thing about the Parthians as well is they get the execution square um, tree. Which gives you great law, Like, really good law. So, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, where else was... We need to construct Campus Sake. Let's go for the port there as well. Then Frasper, Walls, uh, and Seleucia. Yeah, Seleucia, we'll go for Stables because it's two turns quicker. It's two turns closer to the front line. So it will definitely be beneficial to be recruiting from there. Now, what's the next turn? Yeah, so we're still making money right now. Do need to expand quick to keep that up. So let's just end the turn and then we'll have a see where we're at. There we are, awesome. They built walls, the cheeky, cheeky buggers. Yeah, we'll attack uh, that neutral faction. Oh look, they're standing next to it, great. Begin the siege. Let's go build those. We only have one peasant, so... Okay, they are there. They are 100% going to attack us next turn. It's five units versus eight. One of them doesn't count. Five versus seven. But they will be split. So that is the that is the key, really. That is the important thing. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, the slingers aren't really beneficial for field battles, but they're good for... Um, yeah, there's one one of them gone there. We need both of them to go there. Although, I don't think he's on a wall, uh, on a road. Oh yeah, he definitely is. We need a watchtower like over here then, maybe? Um, when Arsis comes of age, because he'll come of age, probably Frasper. We, uh, if he's one of these guys... It's likely he's one of these guys' sons. So, uh, we'll send him over and, and do that. Right, let's... Yeah, those Seleucids are going back up this way. Or do we go after them? Oh, hello, Armenia. I'm not sure we do, you know. I think we go there. And we keep recruiting horse archers at Susa. If they want to attack Seleucia and take it back, that's fine by me, honestly. Because we'll just recruit a horse archer army here and go and siege it down again. It's it's fine. As long as we're pushing on and expanding, then that is fine by me. Yep, we're building there. Alright, all you guys. You go there. You can't move. We're still recruiting here, aren't we? Cool. Let's see these. Alliance announced between Armenia and the Seleucids, of course. War between Parthia and uh, Scythia, yeah. Recruitment. Both recruiting more horse archers. Brilliant. Susa, you got the Shrine to Zoroastra. Hmm. We don't have a lot of money. So, could go with that. And then can we build anything else at Susa? We can just build a trader. That's fine. That's fine. How much money are we going to have? Yeah, we're still making about a thousand, so we're not going to be able to build a huge amount. See, this is the sort of, uh, if you're still recruiting the horse archers as well, then that's the crux, really. Um, but it looks like that might be everything uh, for this episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this part. Yeah, let's play on very hard. We are going to keep expanding. We've taken two settlements already this first Seleucia and Fraspa. Uh, we're going to expand to Hatra and Campus Alani. It's very likely we're going to get attacked at the end turn. Um, and yeah, we will... So yeah, Armenia should fall relatively quickly. So in terms of the long-term plan, um, we want to eliminate the Seleucids in this area and then move into Egypt and have sort of this area and Anatolia locked off whilst also, you know, expanding slowly this way. Once we get around here, we might go south, though, down into Greece. But 
really we want to focus on this richer land in Anatolia and Egypt um, and uh, you know the, the, the Levant so yeah so we really want to just kind of corner off this whole area of the map once you get to these three cities Thebes Memphis uh, and Alexandria like basically there's nothing but like there's nothing here they're just terrible little towns probably owned by Namidia that are worthless and unable to recruit anything so you're kind of safe once you get there so we go there come safe that's good um and then we can look further afield to Rome, where the real danger is. Now, post Marium units will be able to do Testudo, which could be effective against our horse archers. However, even when Roman AI gets the Marium reforms, they tend to keep a lot of their Hastati and Princapes and Equites and all that sort of stuff, rather than, you know, sort of upgrading to the Marium units quickly. They tend to tend to upgrade slowly. So if we can expand quick enough, we should be able to get there before they really have big units full of Praetorian cohorts or, or legionary cohorts. So that is the plan. Um, hopefully it's a good one and hopefully it works. That is the main thing. So thanks guys. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It really helps out. And thank you very much for watching and I should hopefully see you again on the next video.